Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today in the shop we have a 2009 Toyota Corolla with about 190,000 miles on it. And the customer complaint is uh, it's not shifting properly. On the highway the RPMs are really high. Apparently it's not shifting into overdrive or something along those lines. Uh, I haven't test driven it yet, I just scanned for codes. And sure enough we do have a trouble code so let me show you what that is and uh, hopefully we can diagnose it right here in the shop. We're inside the vehicle. Got the trusty Autel in the Toyota OEM mode. It has one fault in the engine and ECT. So let's go to that menu. Read the codes. Boom, history, current and pending, P0977, shift solenoid B, control circuit high. Alright, that is great direction, so now let's go to all data, look up the code definition and see what we need to check. Before we go to all data, I was just checking bidirectional controls here, and it looks like we can, in fact, activate these solenoids in the transmission. So they have different names, SLT, ST, SLU, S1, and S2. So from all data we should be able to tell which one of these solenoids uh, we want to activate and check it that way. Alright, so we have our trouble code pulled up and it says control circuit high, we have a 77, shift solenoid valve S2. So that's the one that we can bidirectionally control to make our, our life easier. So it says trouble area, either the solenoid itself is an open circuit or there's a wiring problem or the computer's faulty, which I doubt because it actually set the code so it's trying to turn it on. <clears throat> but uh, it gives you some uh, you know, code setting criteria. Range check. So this solenoid operating range, the resistance should be from 11 to 15 ohms. So that's another easy check we can do with an ohmmeter. Even though the ohmmeter is, you know, taboo, uh, we can do a bidirectional check to check the wiring integrity. We can also do an ohm check on this solenoid. Maybe we'll even start with that. So the wiring diagram is very simple. It's just one wire. It is power side switched and the solenoid is grounded internally in the transmission. So, all right, I think we already have enough information to do some checks. Looking at BBB Industries, at the wiring diagram, here's the ECM, here are the shift solenoids. It even tells you, you know, it labels them right there. So S2, that's our guy. It is a pink and green wire on pin 10 uh, at the transmission. So pink and green. It doesn't even tell you the wiring color on here, but it is pin 10. So let's go find that wire. We'll back probe it and see what we get. So looking for this transmission connector. I think you can see it down there. Get some light on there. Uh, to the right, to the right of that wiring loom, right there, you can see a bulk connector, and I think we can see our pink and green wire right there on the corner pin. So let me make sure that's the right wire. We'll back probe it, and we'll start doing our electrical checks. Well, guys, I think we just found our problem. I'm back probing that wire and we have six kilo ohms of resistance. So if I take the ground lead off, oh well. Ground lead back on, about six kilo ohms. And there shouldn't be any voltage on there right now. So <clears throat> we suspected that solenoid is indeed bad inside the transmission, unless there's a wiring or connection fault. Uh, I can try to unplug that connector and plug it back in, but I doubt that number will change. Unbelievable. I was reaching down, I touched this hose, 
and the damn nipple snapped off. Ah, uh, <laughs> that sucks. This reminds me of that stupid Nissan Pathfinder that we had. Oh man, you get a little drip pan under there. That really sucks. Now we can't take it for a test drive. Oh yeah. Damn. Just let that drain, I guess, huh? I'm still gonna unplug that connector. So guys, before I destroy something else, I just wanted to point out a little thing that I see on this connector, which is being very stubborn. Look down there. See that crusty stuff on that green wire? And also, get a little better lighting in here, it's a little tough to see. Like there, there's this blue crusty stuff on there. It looks like it's been dripping from the battery terminal down right onto the transmission connector. So I don't know if that's part of our problem. We still need to unplug that connector and see what it looks like inside. Uh, it might not be a bad solenoid. It just might be a really corroded connector from this battery juice that's been migrating down and wreaking havoc on that connector. Uh, I might have to lift the car up and get in from the wheel well, or oh, or take the battery out. Um, and a busted nipple, we can't take it for a test drive. Uh. Alright, so I finally got that connector unplugged. It was kind of stuck, filled with dirt, battery, acid, whatever. The pins look okay. So I want to do a few resistance checks on these solenoids. Uh, some known goods and our suspected known bad. So first, pin 2, gray wire, solenoid ST. I come in here on pin 2. Let's see, pin 2, okay. The resistance is 12 ohms. If you remember, that was a known good spec. So that one's 12, pin 5, green wire, S1. Going over to pin 5, and there. 12.2 ohms, that's great. And our suspected known bad, or suspected bad, solenoid S2 on pin 10. Oh, let's see here, pin 10. Okay, right now we have 2.4 kilo ohms. That is not to spec. So indeed, let's write that down. 12.0 ohms. 12.2 ohms, and what do we have here? 2.4 kilo ohms. Bad. So, our problem is inside the transmission. I'm going to clean that connector up and, you know, plug it back in and fix this nipple and we'll order a new solenoid S2 from the dealer and uh, we'll take the transmission pan off and see if we can replace this part and get this car back on the road. So let's check, let's uh, use that bi-directional control and check the wiring integrity from the ECM to the transmission. And I still have that green and pink wire back probed, everything's connected. Battery negative here, and on the end of my leads is our famous mini test light with stackable banana jack connectors, how about that? Now when we Turn on this bi-directional control, that little light should come on. Let's try that key on. Oh, there you go. It's on right now. Bingo, wiring integrity confirmed. Now I just want to check, let's see if we can uh, 
solenoid S2. Turn the engine is stopped and shift position is P or N. Okay. Let's turn it on, off, on, off, sweet. So bi-directional control works great. Confirmed open circuit in that solenoid in the transmission. So next up is internal transmission repair.